It's a complex and multifaceted issue that has spanned for decades, threatening the country's hard-earned reputation as a beacon of peace, the Boko conflict. At its core, it's a chieftaincy dispute between the Mampusi and the Kusasi ethnic groups, with roots dating as far back as the 1950s. Although scholars are generally divided on the main causes of the conflict, some schools of thought say the originating factor lies in the opposition of political authority and chieftaincy structures on regions that historically operated without centralized leadership, a legacy of colonialism. The conflict has escalated over the years, resulting in significant loss of life, displacement of the people, and economic hardship. And multiple factors have contributed to its persistence. But the long-standing chieftaincy dispute over who should be the rightful chief of Boko has been a major driver. Politicians have often exploited ethnic tensions for their own gain, foiling the conflict. Control over resources such as land and markets have also played a role with external influences, including the influx of Bokna Bay refugees and the presence of extremist groups in the region, further complicating the situation. In recent years, the conflict has taken a deadly turn, with reports of gun violence and fatalities. The situation has been exacerbated by the proliferation of advanced weaponry and the involvement of external factors, including the extremist groups from Burkina Faso. The humanitarian impact has been devastating. Thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes due to the conflict, struggling to access basic amenities like food and healthcare. Economic activity has been disrupted, leaving many without livelihoods. But what's even more devastating is the thousands of lives lost within the last six years. Despite efforts to end the conflict, it remains complex and challenging, requiring sustained attention and commitment from all stakeholders. As a new chief, they have been scanned, recognized by law. We all know the answer. Now, I would entreat the security services to act promptly, identify those conflict actors, the shadow actors, those stakeholders sponsoring the activity and apprehend them. They always all have a tight situation in Boko. In February 2023, reports of the installation of a new Boko chief from Mampusi tribe, Seidu Abagri, surfaced, disregarding the reign of an existing chief from the Kusasi tribe, who was at the time recognized by law as a chief of Boko. The situation spawned warnings from security experts for swift actions from the security agencies. Tensions resurfaced, many were killed, and several others injured. An arrest warrant was placed on Seidu Abari's head after what government described as his illegal enskinment as Boko Naba. And subsequently, a curfew was announced in Boko as part of efforts to maintain calm and stop the clashes. The clashes, which lasted for months, also led to the shutdown of four radio stations in the Boko municipality in February 2024 at the National Communications Authority for utterances described to have contributed to the escalation of the conflict. After a period of calm in the area, clashes in Boko have once again begun. This follows the caution of the arrest warrants on the rival chief's head by a court of appeal in Kumasi leading to his return. And it didn't take long before tensions once again escalated. Over eight travelers lost their lives after gunmen blocked the Bogatanga Tamale Highway near Bimsi, a community close to Waliwali, and opened fire. Campaign activities in Boko have been suspended as a result, with neighboring communities being heavily impacted. When it comes to issues of campaigning, uh, a lot has been suspended. Uh, we have the NDC suspending activities, we have the MPP suspending activities, parliamentary candidates coming out openly to announce suspension of their activities. A whole running mate of the NDC came all the way from a traffic campaign. She comes, the area is volatile, she mm. senses it, and, and she has, I mean, she was compelled to cancel activities in all six 
constituencies of the uh, Kusok area. Jilly, this goes to tell you that the area is tense and anything political or any campaigning will not be done anytime soon. For some security analysts, the renewed tensions in Boko are only a matter of cheap politics. I want to appeal to my fellow Northerners. I'm a very proud Northerner. We should not allow politicians to use us as pros for their own political gain. And Boko has suffered for far too long. Innocent right. people have lost their lives. But the Minister for Chief Tansi has denied these claims. I will employ all sides to stop the conspiracy theories going around, the blame games, and keep calm to allow government to deal with the security and the chief tenancy issues thereof. No one should play politics with this sensitive matter. For now, a curfew has once again been imposed on Boko from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. until further notice. But while the matter remains unsettled, the big question on the minds of many is, is government really committed to solving the escalating tensions in Boko? Well, only time will tell.